Hi, Herman from Platinum Racing Products and welcome to the 2023 PRI Show. This year for PRI, we've done a collaboration with Artec and Grady Performance, and we've put together basically a whole heap of engines with all our parts on it. Instead of having little shells with all of our bits and pieces on it, we thought, you know, we'll just bring 10 engines. We've also got an engine on display at Precision Turbos, which is cool. New parts that we've got here include the new revised Barra cam cover. We decided to go nuts with that and make it absolutely gorgeous and blow way too much time and money on it. So let's see if the things really sell. In America, we're trying to spark a massive Barra fan club in America and we've got a good chance of creating that market here. We've also got the new and improved billet dry sump additions with mechanical fuel pump. We've got the Kinsler new 24 gallon TP2000 pump on display. Been working with them on a collaboration and the Grady engine with all the new Grady collaboration parts that we're selling here with or promoting with Grady available through Grady. Another thing we've also got is the new billet diff 8.8 with the new hat for the rear. We've also got a bunch of new co-projects with Artec, Big Daddy manifolds, reverse rotation manifolds, carbon intakes, single throttle intakes. There's a whole heap of stuff we've been working on together to bring these engines alive. Aside of all the really cool stuff that we brought here, I could have just turned up with this little stand and this one part, which just looks like a normal RB cylinder head, except it is the new PRP R1 cylinder head. Initially, we started prototyping the R1 cylinder head for the next platform to evolve in the RB scene. And then all of a sudden you couldn't get an RB head anymore. So they started to become three grand, four grand, five grand in the last year. Obviously we've been working on this for a couple of years now. Aside of the OEM requirement for cylinder heads, we were breaking the O5U cylinder head and porting it to within its limits. That's about as much as you can port an, an O5U cylinder head. We decided, well, hang on, if this is getting us to three, three and a half thousand horsepower, we need to go to 5,000 horsepower. So let's Let's talk about the two cylinder heads we're working on. There's an R0 and an R1. The R1 is the go fast raised exhaust port six millimeter job. We're talking 35 millimeter buckets. So you're talking a R35 GTR type DLC coated bucket. We're going up to a 37 and a half mil valve, which is three and a half mil over. And we're talking an extraordinarily large amount of CFM volume in excess of 500. We've got cam lobes that spin, you don't need to do the machining. We've got head drain passages that actually drain a heap more. So you don't need to go and run a rear head drain, for example. We've done a whole heap of other improvements with some hidden oil galleries changing the way that we move oil through the cylinder head and also getting it out of the cylinder head so obviously you can see some billet cam caps here that's just a bit of prp flavoring but we've done a whole heap to the combustion chamber and we can actually go an 88 mil chamber or a 90 mil chamber so you can now have a 90 mil stroke 90 mil chamber that makes it a square 3.6 liter and we've got it to flow obviously that four millimeter bigger valve so there's a whole heap that's gone into this head and people are asking, you know, have you improved it? Of course, everything that you can think of and everything that you haven't thought of that we've thought of, it's in this head, it's bananas. The R1 basically is, we're flowing twice the air that the standard O5U, O5U could flow. Now for the OEM type application, we've made an R0 head. The exhaust port's in the factory location. It's a direct factory swap over and it still will get you to the 1500 horsepower, maybe even 2000. When you want to go bananas, you go the R1. It's the better platform. For everyone that wants to keep it under 2,000 horsepower, you go the R0. It's going to be fairly well priced, obviously a little bit more than maybe you're used to paying for a factory RB head now, but it's got a huge realm of performance upgrade already before you go to the R1. So we just wanted to tick both boxes with a heap more potential, but now sky's the limit. Obviously everyone's exceeding the factory capabilities of a modifiable RB platform with a 3.2 or a 3.6 litre to the point where bottom ends are hanging together and now we're cracking heads. So now we've gone two steps above with the head. It's going to go back to breaking con rods and cranks, hopefully, and we'll just get that to evolve. I want to talk about why we went for a cast head as opposed to a billet. There's a misconception that billet's better. Now, why is billet better? Well, it's not. It's for us, and once you start getting into cylinder heads, it's for prototyping. I could have spat out a billet head 
two years ago. The cast head is a lot more expensive to make. The casting process, the patterns, uh, the sand cores, all the rest of it, I mean, it's insane next level. Just to explain the capabilities of cast, you can get castings that are a lot stronger than billets. Billet has a thermal expansion issue, which is a bit of a hassle. It, it makes it very hard to make a head for a street car. Cast being a lot more stable, you can also cast in all the water galleries and everything else. But to give you an idea, and the best way that I can explain why billet isn't better, let's look at Koenigsegg and Cosworth and F1 and Le Mans and all the rest of these high top end manufacturers with a retarded budget to go and make whatever they want. They can print a combination of Inconel titanium carbon composites to make an unobtainium head that is worth millions of dollars. They could choose to use any material in the world and they make their top end stuff for cylinder heads cast aluminium. So why would we go and play around with a billet head that we know is going to give problems and complications to try and get right when we can make a cast head? It's a lot more expensive to get here, but finally now that we're here, the sky's the limit with combustion chamber shapes. We've gone to a, a clover leaf design. We'll get into all of that stuff later. Flame fronts and, and next level engineering with an already more efficient platform. And I know the JZ guys are going to go, no, they make more power. RBs already make more power per cubic inch than a JZ or any other platform of any other engine in the world. And now we've stepped it up a couple more notches. So cast is the way to go. As soon as we start dialing this bad boy in, you'll just start to realize that, hang on, these boys are onto something. They're going the hard way, but it's for a reason. Finally, we managed to cast ahead in Australia only a few days ago, and it was the day before we came in. It was the Tuesday morning at around 8 a.m. where we got the first head. Now, it hadn't been heat treated, so we thought we just wanted to machine it just to try and get it looking finished. Machining a gummy, untreated head is a nightmare. 23 hours non-stop and a really big all-nighter by one of our machining staff to get this head to the point where we could get it brought down meet me at the airport and flown here so it's as finished as we could get it but there's a lot of tooling that we're waiting for to do buckets, spring seats, valve guide, bores, all in one operation with one tool. So all of that sort of had to happen with specialized different tooling as opposed to specialized combined tooling. So that 23 hours to an almost finished head, we're hoping to get it down to less than half of that. Other than that, obviously, we just had no time to finish it, but it is fairly well finished. We've got one combustion chamber, pretty well nailed one port, the rest of the head is all tapped and threaded and all the flanges and everything's finished. It's 90% of the way there, but now that we've had a stab at machining it, we're most likely going to bring this one home, cut it up in a whole heap of pieces, and that's going to make a few people cry, but we need to check casting consistency, we need to check metallurgy testing within the casting core, and we're going to get ready to tool up and make a second head that will obviously go and get tested pretty quickly. We're working obviously with Kelford on the valving and making sure that we we can actually flow the amount of volume that we've created. We've got several different combustion shape sizes, port sizes, and we've got to work out ultimately what we're going to offer the market in stage one, two, three, four, five, whatever. But we're going to cut it all up, and in front of the camera, we're going to show you exactly how we made everything, why we made it the way we made it, and obviously the evolution, where we've headed, how we got to here, the amount of thousands of hours to get to here, and obviously, aim for the future. When we realized that there was a pretty good chance we weren't going to have a cylinder head here, we decided to print one. So that goes to show the port sizing, obviously. This is our Rev 1 combustion chamber, but it was just cool to be able to print a section of the cylinder head so that we could have something on display here in the event that the main head didn't make it, but obviously we got it all together. What we didn't get to happen was the engine block, which we were that close from having here as well, but you can just see how hard we're pushing to make it all happen. So the questions that everyone's going to start asking, we're already getting asked now, what options do you get? There's an R's, uh, R0 as mentioned and an R1. We are happy to offer a bare casting with the basic machining done. If you want to go and do your own port work, we will also be able to offer a completed machined guides and seats and everything fitted head and assembled. So off the shelf, obviously the pricing is going to start at roughly $6,000 Australian for the bare head. And then the R0 will be spec'd and built. And then R1, spec'd, machined, built 
up to the 5,000 horsepower type situation and however many stages we offer in the in the middle of it all as much or as little as you want with both platforms so we're not going out of our way to upset machinists by not letting them do their profile and CNC port work you can do whatever you want but we'll also offer it machined and on the shelf for the people that just need a cylinder head and they need it now and they want to go racing we're trying to bring back the we can buy an RB cylinder head now or an engine or a block or whatever it's all machined to spec we can slap it together in our garage and go racing tomorrow that's where we want to get to now I just wanted to throw one little extra thing in and I've been meaning to say this for a long time. Thank you for your support. Everyone that buys a PRP product, but I just want you to know from the bottom of my heart, other than appreciation, every dollar you spend with us goes back into R&D and making cool new sh for this and all the other platforms that we're working on. So it's not being wasted, squandered. We try and pay as little tax as possible just to try to pump it all back into heads and blocks and all the new stuff that we're making. So thank you and also please continue the support so that we can give back basically.